Hey everyone, this is Dr. Kanita here. I'm on, I'm on another episode of Aria Holistic Healthcast. I have with me Katie Giganti. Hello. Um, and she's going to tell you a little bit about our background. And today we're actually going to talk a lot about mental health in today's society. So welcome, Katie. Thank you so much for coming into the office today yeah. and hanging out with me because um, I know we always have really fun conversations in the in the office that Agreed. I've had to kick her out because I'm like, you got to go. But, um, you know, I invited her because yeah. I'm like, we have such great conversation about mental health and uh, relationships and all these things that relate to um, what we have to deal in today's society. So yeah. thank you again for joining me here today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Excited. And I, full disclosure, there is a little bit of nerves, but I yeah, yeah. it's okay. Kind yeah. of model and lean into it as I tell my yeah. clients. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I, I always enjoy our conversation. So I'm excited. Yeah. Hopefully we can, yes. my brain won't go too often. No, I know. Yeah. We kind of go on a lot of different topics and, yeah. um, but I always think it's interesting and we, we always seem to like trade books too. So <laughs> get good my conversation love language. Books. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, tell us like, how did yes. you get into, um, tell us a little about your background and, and what you do and okay. all that stuff so yeah. that people know what you what you do in life. <laughs> right. So I'll try to keep this a little concise, but I tend to, you know, go on. Um, so I am a licensed clinical social work clinical. So it's the acronym is LCSWC. Um, and so what that means in my practical day-to-day -day life is mm -hmm. I am a mental health therapist. Um, but kind of to give you a little bit more of like the background background, mm -hmm. you had asked me, how I became a therapist, yeah, yeah, which yeah. to me was just like comical. What's your the, story? Right. Yeah. I always like to hear someone's story, story like how right. they got into what they did. <laughs> yes. And I love that too. I'm always trying to figure things out about myself and about yeah. others. So um, I really think it like it goes back to my childhood, right? Mm -hmm. It was something that it's almost like I always was mm. and it's it just took me a little while to catch up to it. Not that I was avoiding it, but I just didn't realize it. So I'm the youngest of four, mm -hmm. um, pretty close-knit family. Um, and I didn't really necessarily realize this until later when I look back in life, but I feel like there has always been an element of I was the mediator. Mm. I was the one that Peace, – Peacemaker. A little bit of peacekeeper. Like it was never anything – like that I even remember being like horrific or terrible, but like I got along with all my siblings. They mostly got along with each other yeah. well, but like I'm also the youngest, so I feel like there's that whole, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm the, I don't think that I'm treated any differently, but sometimes I'm told differently, yeah. right? Mm. So um, when I went off to college, like I had no idea. I had zero clue as to what I wanted to mm -hmm. do. Um, and one of the many gifts that my parents gave me um, was I don't ever recall feeling an enormous amount of pressure mm -hmm. as to figure out like what, you need what I'm going to do. Yeah. Like, what is this going to mean? Yeah. Um, which we can talk about at some point. I see that a lot in mm. teenagers and, you know, going – some even in middle school, like there's so much pressure to mm -hmm. figure out what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that I think really can throw you. But um, so I started out as a history major because I love stories, yeah. right? <laughs> but I was like, I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to be a librarian. Um, then I – Stumbled into my gen ed of a psychology class. Thought that was super fascinating. Mm -hmm. Added that on as a major. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it was my junior year, I added on sociology mm -hmm. as a minor. So then I get like the cultural aspect. Yeah. Um, and then got to my senior year and I was like, what am I going to do with this? Because mm -hmm. I knew I was going to have to go on for an advanced degree, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was really looking towards – you can get – I don't know all the specifics because I did not go into it. You can get different – counseling degrees mm -hmm. which is but you, they're more specific when you go into counseling it's mm -hmm. like you're a marriage and family counselor or you're a school counselor and I just didn't know what I wanted to do so I also was really fortunate again where I had ended up at school um it was a small college and I went to my different professors and I talked to them I don't know what I said to them but mm -hmm. whatever I did say to those psychology professors they all said individually you are a social worker <laughs> Like, I don't know what I said. <laughs> I wish I wish I did. Um, but they're yeah. like, you need to be a social worker. So last minute, like, I scrapped all my applications to the counseling programs. Interesting. Yeah. And went, you know, to social work. Um, and I ended up in New York. I went to Columbia. Mm -hmm. I got my – so it's a master's of science in mm -hmm. social work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I spent a couple of years – I guess really just the years I was in grad school in New York. Mm -hmm. And then ended up back here. Life reasons, the guy I was dating at the time, my yeah. dear. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had a sister that was in Colorado that wanted me there, but I ended up here. Yeah. And, 
that's kind of where we are from now. So the other piece too that you think that I should think of, it's a big piece for me. I am a mom of four. Mm-hmm. So that very much influences what, um, you know, how I practice, things that I've learned through life. Yeah. I'm constantly learning. Mm-hmm. Um, it also impl- influences how I practice because for me, so I I work basically like one, I work like, I'm part-time. So yeah. I work, you know, one full, full day that would probably be broken into like two and a half days for a lot of my colleagues. But that way, it leaves me open the other days to yeah, to, to be mom. Be I mean, mom. I'm still mom the other days, but. I'm, yeah, to truck your kids around. And right. And all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> chauffeur. Exactly. I know. Yeah. Four kids. Is, well, nowadays, it's like so much. It is. It yeah. Is. And like my grandma who had eight. And I'm like, yes, yes that's crazy. I know. <laughs> but I do. And I have a sister who is six. Um. I think there's a, there's a difference in our communities, right? Mm-hmm. There's not the same type of support yeah. that I think people used to have. I yeah. have found a really good community where I live. My mm-hmm. friend, my kids have a lot of friends that so mm-hmm. I'm fortunate in that. But yeah, and I've got a lot of family around. Yeah. So that does a make lot. a huge difference. Mm-hmm. For sure. Right. Yeah. So now mainly do you see, I think you, um, like what kind of clientele do you do you see on a regular basis? You mentioned that too. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Of um, so <laughs> I will see anyone. I think right now I probably my clients range from high school up into their sixties. About okay. Um, so I, it's pretty big range. Actually. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I so I can I can see anybody. I'm mm-hmm. not limited to a particular age group. I would say that my preferred is you know I don't want to go super young because I'm a talker. Right. So I'm not really great at the engaging in the play therapy. Mm, and I, I haven't. It's different. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get those. You can. I could go on and get those tr- those mm-hmm. certifications, but it's just not. That's yeah. not my strength. Mm-hmm. So um, I really, really love slash also, you know, it challenges me. The kids, like I said, that are in high school and in college. Mm-hmm. Um they're really they're taxing and they're hard but because I'm invested because I want so much yeah. for them to yeah. do so well right um and but then I really there's something special about like each um each client that I see and what yeah, I, you know sure. and that was that was another question that you'd kind of asked was how does it affect my life mm-hmm. um and one of the biggest thing is like it's a privilege it is a huge huge privilege to be let into these people's lives mm-hmm. right like mm-hmm. They are being so vulnerable and opening themselves up mm-hmm. to a complete stranger. Yeah. Right? Um, mm-hmm. And I do try to set that um, precedent at the beginning of when I first meet with someone. I always say it's like it's a probation period. Not that I'm testing you out, but mm-hmm. you should test me out and we should make sure that we're a good fit. Mm-hmm. Because I think, and I, I should kind of say this for anybody who's considering therapy, you know, if you've had an experience in the past that hasn't worked – if you've had somebody that you haven't gelled with. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not just saying you just don't like what they're saying to you, but you have this kind of gut response, then maybe it's time to part ways and find somebody else. Mm -hmm. But try, because, you know, just Mm -hmm. like the world, Mm -hmm. there's different people for different, there's different therapists for different people. Yeah, I would say there there are definitely times where I really liked this one when I was in school. Um, And actually during the pandemic, because the whole like emergency protocol i was able to just zoom with her which is yeah. really nice yeah and um it has been more difficult at least here and i actually found someone i really liked but you know i i tried different other people yeah for i'm like let me try other people other therapists and yeah it's just like you said i'm like mm. after a while you just don't gel you don't get the i don't want to say right feedback but maybe it's just the communication is not there yeah so yeah i was like circled back to <laughs> <laughs> it's true though and I think that sometimes too I will say to my clients too like hey if I'm taking you off on, like I need to know what's in your head yeah. I'm not a mind reader so um, if it's helpful if it's mm. not helpful and again it's not always just that you like or don't like what the person mm. is saying because sometimes we really need to be yeah, pushed just some... gently nudged into those mm-hmm. areas of discomfort um, but yeah I think there's a difference when you know like this is not helping but a big thing, not just in therapy, I just feel like in life, a lot of times people, they don't like something. So our tendency is to be like, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm out of here, right? Mm-hmm. And how often do we pause and say, okay, but what's my piece in this? How am I contributing? Or did I even let the person know? Was I able to communicate? Did I think about communicating what my need is? Because mm-hmm. nobody is a mind reader. Mm-hmm. Nobody really knows, right? And so – there is a time, I think, that you want to try to invest and say, okay, like give the person the information that they yeah. want and give them an opportunity. You got to give a 
fair chance and be like right but like you said when they i don't want to say push you but when they kind of challenge you a bit into an area of discomfort it's like oh shut down i don't like this at all and it's like well they weren't really attacking you they're just trying to right challenge you a little bit um and it's fine so this brought a thought when we we were talking i was listening to uh lewis house yeah and uh, of course, he was interviewing Brene Brown. Oh, <laughs> your two favorite. favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is actually a most more recent oh, episode, okay. and it was pretty short. But she talked about, um, you know, I'm not going to quote this correctly, so right. I apologize. But like courage and bravery, and how she asked a bunch of Navy SEALs, and I was like, "There's no act of courage or bravery that doesn't involve." discomfort or yeah. feeling vulnerable mm-hmm. and all that stuff so you, if you think like oh being brave is like not uncomfortable or not putting yourself out there then you're just being safe it's not yeah. actually being brave yeah it's like super interesting it is and lately you know i was really proud of my husband because he you know he had some disagreements with a friend and it's like close friend and all that stuff so yeah he didn't know how it, you know, he was thinking, he's like, I don't know what to do. And, um, you know, I mentioned today was his birthday. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we had a party. But, you know, the, all these things that can happen, we can get into boundaries, all that stuff yes. later. But he was like, I don't know what to do in this case. So, but he, you know, actually talked to him on the phone. Yeah. Had an uncomfortable conversation because it could go either way. You're like, Ugh. yeah, you're, com- you're kind of confronting your friend about something that made you feel not great. Right. So I was like, that's bravery right there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough to do when you're like, um, and it's a really good friend that you've known for, you know, a long time. Yeah. It's hard to kind of be like, hey, you made me feel kind of not great yeah. when you said this about me. It's like hard. And it's so, it, it's so challenging, right? And I, so I think though in those situations, mm-hmm. and again, I struggle with this just as much as anybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm the objective therapist, mm-hmm. it's a lot easier to say these yes. things, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, you're kind of really faced with two options, right? You either mm-hmm. don't say anything mm-hmm. and then you have this level of false falsity. That's not a word, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I like it. I do it a lot, right? It's it's pretend. You haven't really let that person in. They don't know. And so then you're kind of, now you're building on lies or frustration, right? And, and like so, you said, they can't read your mind. They can't, right. Yeah, and this is a friend, you know, other yeah. than being therapist. <laughs> right, right. And then, and, th- and that's the thing. Like, that's one of the scariest things that doubt being vulnerable because you don't know. You don't know how the person is going to receive you. Yes, right. Yes. Now, and I've had sc- scenarios like this. There's one particular friend I can go back to. I could probably even tell you her name because she would, I think, 100% own it, which is a beautiful thing about this person. Mm. Um, I don't think I've seen her in like 15 years, but she's <laughs> still like, we just get each other. Right. Yeah, and yeah, I had yeah. gone and I had visited her and like things had happened and it just, I felt very slighted and like ignored. Mm, um, mm. And I remember thinking, what are my choices? Now, what I ended up doing was I had sent, this is years ago, but I sent her an email and I just let her know what I was feeling. And I didn't know, it was probably a little bit easier because there was a little bit of distance, but she received it really well and she owned it. Right. Mm. And I would say part of the reason we are so close is because she was able to hear mm. where I came from. Mm-hmm. And that just, I could, it was another layer. I already trusted this person, but mm-hmm. now I, I really knew that I could trust her, right? And it's, I think that's, I crave that a lot is like the ability to be my transparent self, mm, right? Yeah. That's, I think yeah. that's true acceptance when like you have friends, but you don't, you don't have to agree with people, yeah, right? And exactly. I think we're in this world now where we're such polarizing. Mm-hmm. Like we can have different views and still be friends. Yes, <laughs> right? And in fact, that's going to help us grow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we need we yeah. need people with different views to really like challenge yes ourselves, and I think that's fair, you know. Mm-hmm. But if it's the part where we're like calling each other names or you right. know, not productive, as not I tell my productive. children. Yeah, I'll be like not helpful, degrading each yes. other. And I'm just like, this is not this is not great. We're not calling each other stuff. This is not good. Yeah. I, to go back to kind of like your friend and you know how my husband kind of dealt with his. Like, what do you think if they don't deal with it well? I guess what would what would be a good response to that? If the friend doesn't deal with it, what do you mean? Yeah. Um, so, and I feel like this kind of pertains to the boundary piece, right? And it, it actually, a lot of it goes back to you, mm-hmm. right? So the, a lot of times, and this is the work that I do a lot, it goes back to us making our own decisions as, okay, so maybe they didn't receive it well. You know, 
did I present it in a way that mm-hmm. couldn't be heard? Who knows what happened with them? Do I want to circle back around or is it something that I'm going to let lie? Also, it goes back to your values, right? Like what was the issue at the heart? You don't have to tell me, but I'm saying yeah, yeah, like, yeah. did it, you know, is this a fight that I want to pick? Mm-hmm. And it's not that you're trying to pick a fight, but yeah. like, or is this a bat, you know, do I just let this one go, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes, sometimes it's the beginning of the end. Sometimes it's you just have to let it marinate mm-hmm. and sometimes they'll come back. Um, I think, and sometimes you can try out like it's acting as if, right? Let's let's act as if this person was able to hear it and are you able to get past it? Or mm-hmm. um, let's act as if it didn't happen. Not that you're denying it, but can I get past this mm-hmm. piece? Um, but it goes back to, sometimes we have to let friendships go. And again, yeah. I don't know the level no, of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, think, I think that's fair because he's like, well, we'll kind of see where this goes. And he's like, he's okay either way. Right. That's, I mean, that's another piece too that I feel like a lot of people have a really hard time th- doing that with friendship. So I can't remember this from, it's an old poem or something. It's, we have friends for a season, a reason, or a lifetime, right? Mm, but in ooh. this, oh, you never heard that one? No, that's I know a good it's one. old, I don't know where it's from. But, um, <laughs> so, but I don't, I think people a have reason, lost that. A reason, a season, and a lifetime. Well, that's yeah, good. <laughs> right? And like, and I can, if I go back and I look at my life from that perspective, I can, um, I can pick out people like, mm-hmm. and there's, there is a sadness that I have, there's been friendships that have gone, yeah. right? I have a childhood friend. My friends ask me about, not my friends, my kids ask me about a lot. Um, was best friend for years. Then they moved away. We still kept in touch for mm-hmm. years. We would literally record tapes, like mm-hmm. tapes, mm-hmm. um, and send them back and forth through the mail, right? It was <laughs> yeah. just like of the most random things. And she and I are not connected anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we kind of are, but we don't, we're not, yeah. um, and my kids have asked me about that. I'm like, we're just different people. And there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. But there's also sometimes if you fill your life just because you can with people, then you're missing out, it's, you know, the quality versus the quantity. But mm-hmm. I think that's one of my one of my issues with things like Facebook, right? Because mm-hmm. just because you have the ability mm-hmm. to keep in touch with somebody doesn't mean that you should, mm-hmm. right? Because where's the depth of that relationship? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's exhausting. Yeah. To now, keep up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, I should try, I'm an introvert, 100%, right? I'm yeah. somebody, people don't believe this about me a lot. Because uh, I will be somebody that will talk to people. Like if mm-hmm. I'm in a social setting, if I particularly yeah. see people that are like on the outskirts, mm-hmm. that's in my nature to be like, let me bring this person in. I don't want, and maybe that person doesn't want to be brought in. I need to remember that too. Maybe they want to be mm-hmm. on the outskirts. But um, it's, if, you know, if you're constantly doing that and like mm. bringing people in, then what is that? You're spread so thin, right? You mm. don't have time to really yeah. invest into some other relationships. It's hard. You know, this, I th- maybe I talked about this with you before, but even even at the end of the year, I do like, uh, like a, this sounds mean, but like, <laughs> like a friend on it. <laughs> no, I love it though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I heard this from. Maybe... Maybe it's from building. I can't remember, but it's it's kind of like okay, what are the relationships I have now, like that are close to, or where where are, like some areas that, um, you know, that I really like this person. I want to get to know them more. And there, this happened last year with um, meeting some new friends through a mutual a mutual friend yeah. through a wedding. And I, I was like, I really like this group of people. Like every time we're with them, we have such a good time. Yeah. We have good conversations and, you know, they reach out to us to hang out with us too. Yeah. So it's like, we're cultivating new friendships. And yeah. then there's other ones that are just like not there as much anymore. And it's like, yeah, how much energy can you put out there? Yeah. And I think there's uh, the difficulty about that is sometimes people then feel rejected, right? Or yeah. there's a fear of that that group maybe feel rejected because I think that's important. Like we do need to remember this is the um, who's Maxwell? Mm-hmm. What's the guy's name? <laughs> anyway, you're the average of the five people you spend the most oh, yeah, time yeah, around, yeah, yeah. And right? <laughs> and so, and it can seem cruel, yes, right? Yeah. And it can seem like you are being mean and cutting people out, right? But there's times like this, this happens in relationships and a lot will come across this in marriage, right? Mm-hmm. Like if people, they used to say, and they might still, um, you needed to like marry somebody who was on the same like educational level as you, right? Mm-hmm. Because they, or they were the, indi- in, the indicated that, you know, there was a higher rate of divorce or there was a higher rate really? of splitting. Yeah. I don't um, look at these rates. <laughs> like, that, I was like, I don't look at these. So right. I'm like, oh God. So yeah, but I think honestly what it is, it's that growth mindset, 
Yeah. Right? Which has mm-hmm. become a much more common, mm-hmm. popular thing within the last, what, like 15 years. And I think that's the piece, right? It's the ability to grow. Like, and that's natural for us. Mm-hmm. That is natural for human beings. My One of my favorite analogies is nature, right? Mm-hmm. If nature isn't growing, it's dying. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it might be hibernating, but that seed is doing something. Yeah. Um, and so there's always something happening. And I think there's times in life where we all kind of stagnate and we get stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, you want people to kind of come along with you on your growth journey. And that's mm-hmm. the thing that gets so exciting. That's why I love our conversations and the books mm-hmm. that we share back yeah. and forth. Because it's like, yes, there's more, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's I, always more. I have ADD I, with books. That yes. really bad. <laughs> Reading like four at the same time. Yep. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so true. I, yeah. I feel like I'm saying that to clients all the time. It's like, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's just, there's just like the piece that I try, I try to convey to them is you're okay where you are, right? That's one mm-hmm. of the things I want to instill in people. I, I don't want you to hear me as judging or, you know, or pointing fingers or that you are whatever might be going on in their head in their life. You know, they're making a mistake. Just like be where you are mm. and then know – you can always do a little bit better each day. But that might mean that some days you're better is worse than your couple yeah. days before, but it's just trying. Yeah, like, <laughs> right? No, I'm and just thinking when I was sick, I was like, yeah, this is, this is me laying in bed is the best I can do yeah. right now. <laughs> and sometimes you really have to. Yeah. Like, I struggle with that a lot. Yeah. A lot. Like, yeah. I, you know, I said I'm a stay-at-home mom. That's that's really how I identify myself, yeah. though, right? And I spend so much time being like, what the heck did I even do today? Yeah. Right? And then I will be like, no, like, you are – providing mm-hmm. things for your family and like, it's okay and yeah. it's okay to not yeah always do all those things i know different- it's like uh i think we're in this mindset and we'll kind of circle back to what we said before about like the pressures that you know high school kids and college kids yeah. get is like you know we're pressurized to make every minute or every hour kind of productive and i definitely fall into the trap me and my husband yeah and he even realized this too he's like we don't have to make every hour productive, but it's just this concept of like, you know, grinding all the time too. And it's, it's tough. I mean, I still kind of like doing stuff all the time. It's yes. Really I'm with you. But maybe like my body, that's why my body revolted this week. I don't know. <laughs> I believe that a hundred percent. Our body talks to us, right? Yeah. We know that. I'm sure you know that, um, you know, and there's even other literature that like our body, there's a great book body keeps score yeah yeah, yeah. yes yep yeah so but yeah and this is the piece and I feel like people like us struggle with this time you know we want to keep going and doing Mm. and so um sometimes I literally have to remind myself I'm here just to be yeah right or Mm. just to hang out so over spring break um I had a couple of my kids um at a ropes course Mm -hmm. I love that kind of stuff yeah love it (laughs) I desperately want to go and like do all the hard things yeah and just be there for myself yeah because I still struggle with that right Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the reason God gave me four kids to to, like draw me out of my inner self right (laughs) so like do you need another one no um but you know we were there and I my one child was doing some harder courses Mm -hmm. that particular child has been there more Mm -hmm. and just had more opportunities The other child, I knew, I knew going into this what my role was going to be, that I was going to be with this child throughout the whole um, piece. And I still found myself getting stuck in that like story that I was telling myself, like I was missing out Uh, on all these other things. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to do those other things. And I, I had to, you know, I was like, no, I like the purpose of this was not so that I could go and do all the black diamonds and be like, mm. wow, look at me. The point, that was never the point when yeah. I decided to do this with these guys. The point was I want to do something fun with them mm-hmm. and I wanted to be with them. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was doing. Yeah. Right. I had to say that to myself multiple, multiple times. times. <laughs> oh, right. Right. But like it's sometimes it's that expectation. Mm-hmm. What, mm-hmm. what's the point? What am I trying to remember? And yeah. What's the goal? Yeah. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard for all of us. I think this is why, like, yeah, I have so many things happening at home, too. We'll see. Right. With the dogs. It's like, God gave me three dogs. Right. No, it's true. It's true. Really, my dad gave me three dogs. So (laughs) that's what happened. Thanks, Dad. Yes. It's true. Everyone, and that's, you can, I don't know. This is my perspective. I drive a lot of people crazy, particularly probably my husband and my children, because everything is a lesson. Right. (laughs) Like, and I tried not to. Last night, my son was like, I'm going to tell you something, Mom. And he was like, please don't lecture. And I was like, oh, like that makes you want to lecture even more. And I was like, maybe a little one. I, I was like, I can't make this promise. You know, um, 
luckily this is a particular who obviously knows that I do that. So um, yeah. he was quite open to it and he laughed about it afterwards. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's so many things. And I think that's the thing. There's an opportunity to learn from anything should we choose mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. Should we choose to. That's yeah. what I, I have to do. This is my brain. It's something you said earlier. So about when we're probably talking about like choosing therapists. Um, this is one of those stupid jokes, but like how many social workers does it take to change a light bulb? Mm-hmm. You've heard this one before? Mm-mm. Just one, but the light bulb has to want to change. <laughs> That's so funny. Right? That's a good one. Like it's, <laughs> and I feel like Brene Brown says that a lot too because Brene is also a social worker. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like – you have to be in a space to hear things. Mm-hmm. And that's too, going back to even like with the friend, right? Mm. Your husband. Like if that friend was not in a space to hear things. That's why it's like I'm not a big fan of cutting people off right right away. Like giving some chances. But also listen to people when they show you who they are. Mm. That's true that. too. That's great. Get some good nuggets there, <laughs> Katie. Love it. <laughs> I love my quotes. I do. Yes. So. I love the quotes too. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, we, you know, when I wrote down the outline, we talked about healthy boundaries, which I think we spoke about. Yeah. Um, and also the, you probably see a lot of uh, the high school kids and the college kids going through, uh, you mentioned before when you were going to college, you yeah. didn't feel any pressure. But nowadays, I feel like it is like a whole different ball game. Like even I don't, uh, I don't know if I felt pressured. I, but I, I think... My parents didn't worry about me because I was pretty driven. <laughs> yeah. Right. I was like a self-driven person. So I'm like, yeah, she's fine. She'll figure it out. Right. Yeah. But let's say like someone's not as self-driven, which is okay. Like, you don't. I think you don't have to know what you want to do at 17, 18. Right. How are you supposed to know? Yeah. Right? I mean, there are some people. So, and speaking about that, so I feel similarly that my parents, like there was that innate trust, which mm-hmm. can't always be taught hopefully I pray hope and pray for a lot of people that like they at least yeah. have somebody in their life that they have that that trusts them because there's that's part of how I think we learn to trust ourselves oh um, okay but you know so my siblings all knew pretty much what they wanted to do so again I'm the youngest of three my oldest was like I'm going into business not a problem and the second one great at math CPA has since changed but also business minded and then my other sister was a teacher from the time like they all knew Mm. um what they were gonna do and so I get that there's a lot of people there are some people that like know that Mm -hmm. which to me I'm like how do you know right um I didn't and yes I see a lot of people not knowing and there is so much pressure Mm. to pick the right school to you know know what you're gonna major in Mm -hmm. to pick the right some I know and this was probably actually the same when I was applying to college but I didn't necessarily go to mm-hmm. this college is that I know I think at the U- University of Maryland I believe like you have to apply to this particular college within the university um so you have to know even before that like I'm going to go into engineering or I'm going to go into mm-hmm. you know and I'm like mm-hmm. I wouldn't have I would have had no clue so and it's scary because we're told that you have to have a college degree which it mm-hmm. it does obviously help Mm-hmm. I would love for somebody to do a study on how many people are actually using the degree that they got mm-hmm. and the way they got it. I mean, even for myself, when I was in graduate school, what I learned, how I learned to be a social worker was through the practice. Like, so mm-hmm. we had an internship. Yeah. I was at the internship three days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I learned to be a social worker, right? And then in the ensuing years when I was being supervised and being trained, it wasn't, yes, there's important stuff to be learned in the classroom. But that's mm-hmm. not, you know, I think that's true for so many, so many jobs you learn on the job right mm-hmm. so it's how do we learn how to learn mm-hmm. and then let people kind of figure their way out and I don't mm-hmm. I don't have an answer so I don't want to like say that I do but I think a lot of times I feel like when people we put so much pressure on ourselves what happens is it's like this cement wall mm-hmm. like and you're not able to kind of have feelers out and try different things yeah um and it's just so much focus I have to do this I have to do that mm-hmm. and it just it breaks my heart it really mm-hmm. like breaks my heart when I see these kids and mm-hmm. just having no idea, mm-hmm. right? And the one thing I want to say to them is like, you're, you are capable. You're yeah, gonna yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Like, and I know I also should say I recognize and I'm aware I, everyone comes from different backgrounds. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so that's an element too, right? I am a white middle class woman. That is a huge component of my story. And that's mm-hmm. not everybody's story. And that does impact my experience versus other people's mm-hmm. experience. Um, but I think it's still true that like everybody is capable of doing 
st- something, mm-hmm. right? Everyone can figure it out. And then they do need those role models. They do need that support. They need someone to lift them back up and be there and support. Not do for them. I think that's an area where we are in a <laughs> lot of trouble, right? Yeah. All this rescuing. <laughs> no, no. Not a fan. Um, yes. Yes, that can be. Yeah. That's very interesting you say that. But yeah, go on. Yeah. No. <laughs> and I, I'm guilty of rescuing. I've done it to my children too. Actually, as I was leaving to come here today, I saw some homework on the table and I was like, I wonder if he needed that. And I was like, I could text him. And I was like, nope. I was like, if he needed it, he needed it and he doesn't mm-hmm. have it now. Like that's mm-hmm. just, you know, mm-hmm. people learn better through experience. Yeah. That's true for all of us. Yeah. Um, I think to varying degrees. Mm-hmm. But I think that's very true. Um, so yeah, there is a lot of pressure. I try to... I mean, so each person that I work with, I try to encourage them to spend a little time. This is this is something that I, I feel like ties into a couple of the questions that yeah. you asked me. Mm-hmm. Um, of one of the, I guess, root problems that I see us dealing with a lot um, is people's lack of ability to a get bored. Mm-hmm. People like fear boredom. Maybe it's just my kids, right? Oh, I'm going to be bored, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody has died from boredom. <laughs> it's not yet happened. You're not going to be the first. Um, and in fact, amazing things can come from being bored, yeah. right? Yeah. I recall when I was young, sitting in the family room, the big, the, the green rocking chair that we have flipped upside down, just like rocking, staring, right? <laughs> like I was probably bored, right? But like, I now like crave that time Mm -hmm. to like go back to that. And there were things that like just, and my mom always would say this. She's like, I love being bored because so many wonderful things Mm -hmm. would kind of come into our head, right? And so I think people are afraid of it. I think it's also way too easy for us to avoid boredom Mm. because we have the phones, phones, right? Yeah. So it goes into like all the social media stuff. And so it's not, so one, you're avoiding boredom. Two, now you're looking at what everybody else Else is is doing. doing. Yeah. And I think an important component for us to all remember is that, um, you know, the biological part of our being, right? Because there are certain ingrained pieces of ourselves that are wired to keep us alive, yeah. right? And one of those is living in community. Mm-hmm. Because a long time ago, you had to live in a community to really survive, survive yeah, yeah. right? Don't need to anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, we do to a degree, but like you can pay for pretty much anything at this point. <laughs> now, that's not going to help your mental health, right? <laughs> but it's going to keep your physical body alive. Yeah. Um, and so that's the thing that I think is like, we know, I, did you see the social dilemma? It's on, it's a documentary. Oh, you know, I watched part of it. Finish it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So like they, they have psychologists, they have people like me that work on these programs to draw people in. Mm. So it's working against your biology. Right. And so one, it's really, really hard to put down. Two, one of the things that they're tapping into is that need to be connected to other people, mm. right? So when we see, and I know everyone kind of takes this different way. Some people are like, I'm the disruptor online. I'm like, yeah, but you're still online yeah. <laughs> talking about something, right? Yeah, Which yeah. is not all bad. It's not all bad. There's been so much amazing things that have come from it, right? But I think you have to do it very mindfully, mm-hmm. which I know is a big word these days. So I kind of hate it, but I also kind <laughs> of love it. Um, <laughs> you know, I like that. I'm like, boundaries is a big, yeah. big thing now. Right. Um, but no one knows what that means, kind of. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because that's, and I said this so too recently. I was like, you know, I think it's an amazing thing. I really do that a lot of these things are becoming common yeah. concepts. Yeah. But it's like, how many people, I can't tell you, I mean, I would be a millionaire, right? If people were like, I have OCD mm-hmm. or that person's a narcissist. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, no, like you don't understand <laughs> like the actual, like what that means, right? Yeah. Like do you even really grasp what that means? So yes, it's great that we're talking about this stuff, mm-hmm. but then I think that's also thrown around so casually that then people dismiss the stuff, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so we don't really understand what something means or mm-hmm. like how it impacts us. So I, I don't know if this relates, but my, this is where my brain is going. So <laughs> <laughs> at my old job, I worked um, in the disability department, right? So I worked with a lot of individuals who had some sort of disability. I think mm-hmm. we all have disabilities, mm-hmm. you know. But um, there were some times where um, the kids would get to a certain age and they didn't, they had never been told, right? And mm-hmm. so this happened multiple times, right? The parents hadn't shared with them. And then it would come into the time and the parent would be like, we need to share with them. Whether mm-hmm. because it's at school and it's an IEP yeah. meeting or something was coming up. And, you know, I, what I would say to them a lot is, I, you're, it's probably going to go one of two ways. You're going to tell the child and they're going to be like, I know. Like, this yeah. is not news to me. <laughs> Maybe you're giving me an, a, a name for it. Yeah. Um, or um, 
they, you know, they just, they just don't care. It's just, you know, we all, we all kind of know, and I really lost why I was saying this to you, but <laughs> um, <laughs> like we, we all know what we're dealing with, right? But it's like how, the, the important thing is not, this is what it is, the important thing is not the label. Mm -hmm. The important thing is not always the symptoms. It's like, what's at the root of that? And how do I get to that? And how do I want to deal with that? Do I want to change it, mm -hmm. right? Is that something, or is that part of who I am and that's how I function, right? Because a lot of times, I, I use the word disabilities, right? But what if it's not? Mm -hmm. What if it's just a different way that you present in this world and we need? Yeah. What's that, that new variety? term? Oh, neurodivergent. Yes. That's yep. heard. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. It's interesting too. But yeah, I do think even with, you know, we, I think we talked about this a little bit with disease is like people get so attached to their diagnosis too. So yeah. that's also, they're like, I have this. So I'm stuck with this. I'm like, well, we, we could do stuff about it too. Right. Just yeah. To be, I mean, there's some things that are like, okay. <laughs> this is kind of hard, but right. Well, there's always something, yeah, that yeah, you can do about something. it, right? Um, and I know we hadn't talked about talking about this, but it's something that I'm dealing with, right? So I was diagnosed with celiac disease, mm -hmm. which is funny to me because there's a part of me that there's one part of me that's like this is huge, and there's another part of me that's like it's not a big deal at all, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and I've dealt with that, right? It's like, well, what can I do about it? I can get stuck in this place, and there are times when I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I really want that piece of pizza. And yeah. don't try to tell me to have a cauliflower crust pizza, which previously I would have eaten and loved, mm -hmm. right? But now it's this like arch nemesis. I know. Like <laughs> I want the like greasy, you, you know. You want, I know. Yes. I get that too. <laughs> so, um, but like, and, and we all go through, I think this is the other piece that's important to remember is we all go through waves, right? It's not just like I get to this place of acceptance and I'm fine, mm -hmm. right? Because there's going to be, we change, we're constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. There's things in life about us that are changing and so our perspective on things are going to mm -hmm. change, right? But like the important thing too, and this is when I'm like, hmm, um, is, <laughs> I feel like you watch Ted Lasso. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like Roy Kent. Yes, bro, bro. yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Roy. Yeah. So um, I feel like it's it's okay to get stuck, right? Because mm -hmm. if you get stuck on getting stuck, then you're even more stuck. We don't want to have layer upon layer of frustration. Mm -hmm. But um, to remember there's always something you can do. Mm-hmm. Even – and sometimes that thing is not doing do anything, mm -hmm. right? Um, I can't tell you how many times – I know you we want you want to talk about anxiety, but mm -hmm. like how many times I'll say to people, right, sometimes it's just about sitting and letting the thoughts come into your brain. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you are not your thoughts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a big not thing. your thoughts. And I don't know that fully, people fully understand that. Mm -hmm. um, You're the – where was that from? Was it from doing the work? But yeah, you're the you're the thinker of your thoughts, but you're not yeah, your but, thoughts. Yeah. Well, and I, 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 it could be from that. I mean, I I, again, know. all the things. I still need to get, you know, that book. <laughs> you're telling me. It's on my it's library It's building list. a second brain. Yes. That's, so that you can remember all the books that you read. Oh, my God. Just for you guys to know. That's what I need. So yes. <laughs> because it creates daily highlights for you, too. So yeah. it's pretty nice. Yeah. I Sorry. Just, I probably gonna... need to go buy it. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I Like, I go to the library every week. Am I, like. Is just I know. Growing. It is insane. But yeah, sorry, I I interrupt. So we're thinking, uh, we're talking about like, yeah, we're not, you we're know, not our thoughts. We're not our yeah. thoughts, and this goes into I think is it's a nice segue into anxiety. Yes. And how, um, you know, you probably see a lot, and I see that a lot too in my clinic, especially around our area. Uh, what people can do, or what you know, maybe not why people have it, but what people can do about it. Is it like? something that can be I don't say dealt with but you know something that can we can do ourselves that yeah oh yeah 100 percent. and I think that's a great way to say that yeah um so um first thing to know about anxiety in new city we don't have to know it's it's a biological part of everybody mm -hmm. we have it right yes. so um this is my analogy I'll give it in case other people don't like this is your brain mm -hmm. this is your amygdala right mm -hmm. the like reptile reptile part of your brain mm -hmm. and then your fingers are our cortex right mm -hmm. our cerebral cortex and this is the part that's in charge of fight flight or freeze mm -hmm. so a long time ago we really needed that that's the part that was in charge of keeping us alive mm -hmm. keeping our physical bodies alive and so everybody has it yeah it's still there we have not evolved out of it i don't think that we ever will what has happened it's kind of miswired now it's mm -hmm. and so okay. um some people i think everybody's experiencing anxiety yeah I think, I mean, I've been having friends. And I know I struggle with it. I said that to you, like, oh, triggered all my anxiety, yeah. right? <laughs> um, 
it's it's real. It's yeah. a very real thing. Yeah, there's right? some things that definitely do for right. sure. Yeah. Um, and so but we have to recall what does that mean? Like, what's it trying to tell us? And it's not like I'm not in danger, right? So this is not maybe a popular thing, but I'm like, it's not going to kill you. Mm-hmm. It's not going to kill you at this mm-hmm. point, like the things that you are afraid of. So one, no, it's really important to know that it's normal, mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. not even neurodivergent. Everyone of us uh, has it. Yeah. Um, it's just how we allow it to control our lives, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to know that, yes, we have it. And um, it used to be that they would say to us, us being the therapist, um, you know, we want to work on like grounding the person and breathing and meditation and helping them calm, which is something I still am an avid proponent of, right? Mm-hmm. You want to do these things. I always tell people when they first come see me, that's what I'm going to have you do. And I get this like, really? <laughs> um, and yes. like, yes, because we have to set our baseline lower. Like we want to be in a, like yeah. think about it. Like if you're less charged up, when yeah. you have that spike, you're not going to go as high. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes sense. Right. Um, and it used to be that like if someone was having a panic attack or if someone was in the middle of anxiety that you would then say, okay, use your tools, use mm-hmm. your breathing, use your grounding techniques, use some meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's actually really the exact wrong thing because the thing is when it comes to anxiety, we all try to avoid it or most people try to avoid mm-hmm. it, right? But it's getting information. It's constantly getting information. So if you start to feel – there's three parts to anxiety. There's – sorry. Um, <laughs> your um, – your behavioral responses, your thoughts, and then um, your – I was confused. Mix these up. You should think I should know this. So it's That's fine. physiology, your thoughts, and then your actions. Was the, it'll make sense as I keep talking. I promise. <laughs> um, so, so for example, like if you are – I have a sister who's deathly afraid of spiders. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, to the point that she'll call me and tell me about this spider mm-hmm. that's like 1,000 miles away. <laughs> Right. So um, you do something about right. the spider it's like, Okay. Um, and I'm not much better. I remember babysitting once and making a child kill a spider. It's like, I'm not touching that. I've gotten yeah. better. But so you'll see the spider, right? And you interpret it. Like, so then your heart starts to race. Mm-hmm. Your body, you know, mm-hmm. your palms start to sweat. So you have a physical reaction mm-hmm. to it. And then your thought is, I'm going to die. Yeah. It's going to get me. Whatever it is, right? And then it's this mm-hmm. constant cycle. And so then what happens is the more that we, when we react to it, then you've just trained this part of your brain that it's actually something you really need mm. to be afraid of. So you've reinforced it. Mm. So um, then what can happen as these things get worse is maybe you don't see a spider, but your palm starts to sweat. So then your brain goes, you start to scan your environment. There mm. must be something wrong, right? Mm. And then you change your behavior again. And to the point that like, people who have, you know, extreme, extreme anxiety, it's controlling their life, mm. right? And so – People's tendency is to avoid it. Let me set up all the safeguards around making sure that I don't have to face this. And people who are, you know, parents and spouses and other family members of people with anxiety, you know, sometimes it's like, I just have to get them out of the house. So we like co-conspire with anxiety. Mm. But again, that only makes it grow. Mm. So again, I think the biggest tendency is to try to avoid it. And the best thing to do is actually to face it. Mm -hmm. So you would ask me like, what are some of the things that somebody Mm -hmm. can do? So um, like I said, 100% 100% like journaling, breathing techniques, meditation. You can find all this stuff on YouTube. You can yeah. get some apps, simple habit, calm, mm-hmm. smiling mind or headspace are some of my favorite ones. And do those things regularly, right? And going back to like you are not your thoughts, remember, or if you didn't know this, like there are so many, so much stimulus coming mm-hmm. in throughout the day, so much that we're not even consciously aware of. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes you'll have this thought like pop up and you're like, where did that come from, right? Well, because you – it came in at some point, but mm. you weren't aware of it. So that's why we're not our thoughts. Just because there's a thought in your brain doesn't mean it's something that is yeah. one of your values. Yeah, or it's true. But you believe. Yeah, right. Yeah. So the idea of just sitting for like mm. two to three minutes and just letting the thoughts come mm. in, right? And sitting in that discomfort. Mm. This makes me uncomfortable, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost I, it's like shaking up a bottle of soda and just like we need to slowly release that pressure Mm. because if we don't it bubbles up and boils Mm -hmm. over so that's like a baseline for just every day yeah big advocate for that um that's also where the cold showers come in i know that maybe it's not (laughs) i know know. we talked about it it's it's all good though right (laughs) so (laughs) the idea behind the cold shower um (laughs) is that katie knows how i feel about it most people hate it right there's this very (laughs) visceral reaction and response to like a cold shower like wow right Mm -hmm. but the idea is that with anxiety, and this is the thing about anxiety, and I'll come back to the cold shower. 
if you're when you're in the middle of a panic attack, if you're in the middle of your anxiety and you try to use a breathing technique, or if you try to ground yourself, you are going to be reinforcing really? that anxiety. Interesting. The thing is, the anxiety is going to come and go completely on its own. Yeah. We don't have control. Like once it's been triggered, it's going to release and it's going to release all the hormones and chemicals into your body anyway. So we kind of trick ourselves into believing that we did something to make it go away. And it, that then we become reliant upon these tools rather than skilling up, as mm-hmm. one might say, that you're capable. Mm-hmm. You are capable of withstanding this anxiety. Yeah. Um. So behind the cold showers. Now, the reason I started it was like trying to deal with inflammation because I know that sometimes we would help yeah, with yeah, inflammation. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> also with taking a cold shower, you, I mean, you mentally know I'm going into a cold shower. Whether you go I advise just going directly into a cold shower. Do not do the hot and then the cold. That actually makes it worse. Um, Because it's the buildup of like, this is coming, this is coming. (laughs) Right? Um, But your body will have a reaction to it. But then you also realize that you can withstand it. The Mm -hmm. other really cool thing that will happen, um, and of course I share this information with my children, so now a child is doing it. And they said to me, it's weird. Like I was taking a cold shower and they're like, but it started to get hot. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, that was your body. Mm-hmm. Like they had, they were like, I had to keep turning it colder because again, it's the same idea. Like your body takes input in and it responds to mm-hmm. it, right? And so, to be able to recognize that we can withstand mm. this discomfort, mm-hmm. um, so that's a big, real like it's an exposure, right? So if you have a fear, you have to face it. Mm-hmm. Um, another tool that I really like, and this is again one that people are gonna be like, "Why? This should probably make it a lot worse," is to write about it. So. And I'm paper and pen person. Don't pull out a phone. Don't pull out a computer. And you can, but you're going to get a different um, yeah. response to when you actually write it down. Yeah, I agree with that. Even though I have a, like electronic calendar, I actually write stuff down. Yeah. Because it's like, it's weird. It's, yeah, it's a neurological process, yes. I feel yeah. like. Yeah, and there's like a muscle memory. They know that with like when you took notes yeah. in class. Yeah. But I do, you know, I, I like that a lot in terms of, uh writing it down because then you kind of when you it's almost like when you write it down or this is true it's like oh it was just that yes that's exactly what okay it is. that yes. is exactly what it is right it's a hundred percent and i still have to remind myself that every day i've actually yeah. started, i've started practice of writing out i yeah, used to do my husband does it too yeah. i haven't done it my husband does it so <laughs> he's out. better so than me <laughs> every, it's not better not better i'm just kidding right. um you know it's very common to do the gratitude practice which yeah, i have yeah. tried i have tried so desperately to do <laughs> And I do it, right? And it still feels like fake. But um, I think it's so important to do because it can gr- draw mm. your mind towards the positive. But the discomfort piece I found actually much more productive for myself. And mm. I think it's different. It was all different types of people. But yes, it's like that's what it was. Or it, it objectifies it, right? It, mm-hmm. it takes it out of being trapped in mm-hmm. here. I think Brene uses this too. Did you ever see the movie Gremlins? Are you familiar with Gremlins? I mm, no. ask you this. Okay. The idea behind it's Gremlins, it's like an 80s like horror movie. Yeah. I don't like horror, so that's why. I don't think it was that bad because I think I saw it when I was young, which would not have happened. But the idea behind a gremlin, these little, yeah. like there's a cute furry, like little yeah. gremlin, right? But if you feed it after midnight, um, it these other like terrible, gross yeah. gremlins come out, right? Um, but if they come into the light, mm. they die, right? I'm, I know this is a Brene thing, right? So it's the same thing with our mm. thoughts, right? If you feed it too much, it's going to grow. And if you keep it in the dark, it Festers, mm-hmm. right? So when we bring something out, that's all the beautiful thing about finding community to talk about it, right? But yes, you write about it. Yeah, she does talk about Brene Brown, Brene Brown talking yeah. about when you voice fear, you know, it can't hide. Like it can't. then it starts to, yeah, to and you wither see away. Yeah, different paths around it, yeah. right? And you see it, and you're like, and I'll be honest, like even some of the fears and discomforts that I have, I'm like, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Now, now what? what? Yeah, right. Yeah. It is real, right? Okay, well. If that's my reality, what do I want to do with yeah. it? How do I want to live with that? <laughs> right? Um, yeah. That's awesome. So um, we're actually winding down yes. our time now. I realize like it's keeping track. But real quick, Katie. Yeah. So what's, I know I wrote this down. What's one takeaway? One, just, just one. one. I said this to my son. I was the... like, here are my five options. <laughs> what do I that you can, with? That you can, um, one takeaway people can do for just a mental health. It can be related to anxiety or anything that you think is important. So so I think this applies to all. Yeah. Um, and it's this concept of make sure you're setting your expectations appropriately. And what I mean by that is do not expect life to be easy. Mm. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not for anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, life is hard. Mm-hmm. We just don't always show it, right? You either see the 
Perfect. highlight reel. Yeah, yeah. Um, even in day to day life, right? How many people are going to go up and be? <laughs> my brother once said he was walking somewhere and he, you know, was working event. He owns a catering company, and he asked like, "Hey, how are you doing?" The person's like, "Actually, really not good." And he was kind of like, "I was, you know, you weren't expecting that. We expect people to say fine." So remember that most people are not mm-hmm. going to share, right? And that's okay. But um, life is hard for everybody. Mm-hmm. But the hard part is the good part. Mm-hmm. Like that's where we grow. Mm-hmm. Like if you take the moment to pause and think back on the times in your life when you're yeah. most proud, mm-hmm. right? It's typically not the time that someone handed you something, whether it was exactly. a present or a yes. gift. It's something that you did, yeah. right? And I can I can pick out a lot of those moments mm-hmm. in my life. And they were always times which I was like, there was something that I thought that I couldn't do. And mm-hmm. I probably couldn't do it alone. Or I didn't even know that I had the capacity within me, right? So like the hard part's the good part. That's mm-hmm. It's that whole cliche piece. But like the beauty's in the process. The mm-hmm. beauty's in the growing, mm-hmm. right? And to find in our own inner strength. And so, and again, just, and I'm speaking to all of those clients that I can see from over the years. Mm-hmm. Like you are capable. You are so capable. And that's mm-hmm. the part that like, I know I said like, maybe I didn't say it here, but like teach somebody to fish rather mm-hmm. than give them a fish, right? And I mm-hmm. had this inclination to go out and like just wrap somebody up. I'm not yeah. necessarily even like a huge, a huge hugger. Are you better <laughs> for that? But like wrap them up in a hug. Yeah. Um, And I want to because I want to mm-hmm. like pass along that strength, but I also want to be like, you you can, you can do, do this. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you can do this. Mm-hmm. Sorry, last piece. This is a ropes course thing. That child that I was with, right? There were, um, they were like, I can't, do the next one mm-hmm. or the one after that. Mm-hmm. I can't. They'd be in the middle of an obstacle. And I kept saying to them, stay where you are. Mm-hmm. You don't, you're not there yet, right? That's a lot of what anxiety is about. It's the fear of what's coming next. Well, you are not supposed to be able to deal with what's coming tomorrow or next week or next year because you haven't yet gone through what you need to go through to have the strength to be able mm-hmm. to handle that, mm-hmm. right? Be where your feet are. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Beautiful, yeah. Katie. <laughs> Yeah, thank so, you so much for yeah. joining me here Thanks today. I me. feel like I can bring you in. You can talk about so many other things. <laughs> Happy to. <laughs> I've got the anxiety out, right? Lean yes, into it. Yes, Lean into it. You yes. know, He's talking to me. Right. Yes. I'm like harmless for the most part. Totally. <laughs> yes. But thank you again. Thank you for having me. And thank you everyone for listening. And join us on another episode next time.